Praise God. Well, here we are at the end of the year already. Uh, it's hard to remember what February was like, much less November. I kind of re- remember November because of Thanksgiving. The year is gone. Another year has passed almost, just a few short hours away. Uh, and after the first part, or I guess you could say the beginning of the new year, um, what's a common uh, activity that we like to act, uh, engage in here in America? Resolutions. Whoa. Um, so, New Year's resolutions, because this year it's going to be different, right? And then, uh, of course, then all of the, um, you know, the workout facilities begin you know, pumping all, all their, hey, come join us for just, you know, five dollars down. This, um, oh, come, come do this, come do that, because we have to kind of recover from the holidays and resolutions that people make, we make year after year, last a couple of weeks, maybe if we're really, really good, a couple of months, and then we kind of get back to what, business as usual? Resolutions. I have, I have this resolution to not make resolutions. I don't know if that's sort of counterintuitive. I know, right? Sort of like shooting myself in the foot right there. But God is not about resolutions as much as he is about action. And so we could say that this year it can be new, a new beginning. What did you like from this past year? What would you like to change in the coming year? Don't resolve it. Write it down so you don't forget and then do it. It's about taking action about what it is that we desire. Because God is a God of new beginnings. One of the fathers was asked, Abba, is it possible to make a new beginning in a year or in five years? And the father said, truly I tell you, it's possible for a man or a woman to make a new beginning every minute of every day. It's about action, taking the action. Turn over please to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Do you think that the Apostle Paul knew what, what he was doing? Uh, he, did, did he know what he was teaching? Yes. So he didn't like just write all this stuff down and go, you know, hope, hope this sticks. It's like throwing spaghetti against the wall. Hope it sticks. <laughs> did, did he know what he was doing? Yes, he did. And so he writes to us in, in so much of the wisdom, which again, it was not his wisdom as much as it was the breathing of the Spirit of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Messiah, they are a new creation, for old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And so we've heard this verse before. And we say to, to ourselves, I'm new. And yet, from the point at which we accepted Messiah, are we perfect? No. You see, we're becoming new, yes? We're, we're, in the, we're in this process of which many people have heard this verse and have said, yes, I believe that. And they go through a few days, weeks, months, years after that point at which they heard this verse, and they begin to despair because they say to, them, to themselves, I'm still broken. And the truth is, well, they are. I am. We are. And so if we understand that we are becoming new, um, when a a vessel of clay is made out of this lump of clay, does the potter take the clay, throw it on the wheel and say, whew, it's all done. What goes into that? What's that? A lot of work. work. Yeah. um, A little bit of water and pressure and shaping, shaving, um, crafting. And so the potter doesn't say halfway through the process, glad it's all done. No, the potter, he or she completes that vessel. And likewise, you and I are on the wheel of the potter who is crafting us. And so rather than despairing and and misinterpreting the scriptures, which say it is done, he, he has done it. And now he's saying you do it. You jump into the process. You walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. That means we, we walk, and we, sometimes we do what? 
we fall. And if we fall, we must rise again. Messiah also says through the the apostle somewhere else that he says to uh, renew your minds. How often? Continually. Um, Interpretation every day. Uh, We don't just say, yeah, I renewed my mind last month, last year, 40 years ago. Uh, What do you think would happen if you renewed your uh, license tag two years ago? You're going to get a ticket. Why? Because you have to do it every year. The renewal is is this constant. And when we say renewal of our minds, what are we saying? What does that look like? Conforming. Okay. Enlightenment. Okay. Changing the way you think. Amen. Amen. It's, it, it's, 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 this, it's this process. Our, our, our minds are, are in, are in you know, disarray currently, cluttered. Uh, we're cluttered with the cares of this life. We're cluttered with many, cluttered with many worries. And so we're, we, we have this process that we're taking on the mind of Messiah. If you turn over to the book of Lamentations, it's not a book often that we go to. Who is the author of the book of Lamentations? Jeremiah. Okay, the prophet Jeremiah, that's right. Uh, and so, um, lamentations, what does it mean to lament, to weep? Mm-hmm. To, to weep and to mourn, yes. And it's this, this the, but there's much wisdom within the book of the lamentations because it's within the sorrowful times that we can begin to be clarified, purified, and look at what it is that is truly important upon this life. Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22 says, Though the Lord's, or rather, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because of his compassion, or sorry, rather, because his compassions fail not, and they are new every morning. His mercies, what are we saying when we say mercies? Tossing us a little bit of get out of jail free cards here? It's my mercy. What is a mercy? Okay. It's his compassion on us. Yeah. Yeah. His mercy is whatever is the best for us. Uh, it's not letting us off the hook. Uh, it's guiding us to perfection. Translation I have is loving kindnesses. Yeah. Yep. His chesed. Um, a parent loves a child even in spite of the child's actions. And sometimes the parent, being a loving parent, disciplines that child, not because the parent hates the child, but because he loves the child or she loves the child. And that's mercy, is desire for the highest good, and that is our Father in heaven who desires the greatest good for us. uh, Continuing. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in him The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone and keep silent, because God has laid it on him. Let him put his mouth to the dust, yet there may be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes him and be full of reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever, though he causes grief. Yet will he show compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not inflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. It says that he loves us. uh, And he utilizes various things in order to bring us to our perfection. Um, You think we're going to come to a point on this this earth where we go, Woohoo! I'm perfected! Um, if you do, uh, make sure that you drop me a text so I can drop by um, and we, we can reason together. Um, on this, in this life, we reach towards a maturing, a perfecting, a, a purifying, meaning that I am different than I was a year ago, 10 years ago. That according to the scriptures and the fathers, they say every minute we can be different. And where does becoming different begin? <coughs> Take every thought captive, the scripture says. He says that if we do this, 
then we're, we're following in the steps of what God has desired. What happens if, if we don't take every thought captive? Uh, yep. Uh, this, it's, it's, everything just kind of, is, is kind of like... But when we take the thought captive, and we are supposed to take every thought captive and, and conform it to Messiah. And so this is a process. When you begin to learn a sport, are you an auto automatically good at it? You may have some natural talent. Uh, you may be athletically inclined. But you have to learn the process in order to become a good athlete. And that's anything. It, it takes practice. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43 Um, gosh, you know, somebody may say, here, Mishkan, you, you guys sure read out of the Old Testament a lot. Yep. You know why? why? Why do we read out of the Old Testament, the Tanakh? Because of the foundation for the New Testament. Okay, the foundation for the New Testament. It's what everything else rests upon. You don't have a New Testament unless you have a foundation. Jesus didn't appear out of nowhere. He came in an established line of tradition, and he continued this and poured it through the apostles, and it rests upon the foundation of the Tanakh. So rather than it being old in the sense of obsolete, per se, there is, it's a, found, or sorry, um, a treasure house of wisdom that we, through the Spirit, begin to see the principles that are, uh, are, are there when we begin to mine the riches that we find. In chapter 43 and verse 18, it says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. For behold, I do a new thing, and it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And the beasts of the field will honor me and the jackals and the ostriches because I will give waters to the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself shall declare my praise. But you have not called upon me, O Jacob, and have been weary of me, O Israel. And you have not brought me sheep for your burnt offerings nor honor me with your sacrifices. And I have not caused you to serve with grain offerings nor wearied you with incense. For you brought no incense, sorry, you brought me no sweet cane with money, nor have satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices, but you have burdened me with your sins and wearied me with your iniquities. You see, while this speaks of a physical reality in Israel, of there being a restoration of the land, what do you think that, 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 that he's really reaching for here and to point us towards? That's right. So our hearts, give, give me an example of how our, our hearts could be applied to this. How does what we just read apply to our spiritual heart? Well, I read something this week that says when you're blessed with financial gain, don't improve your cost of living, but improve your cost of giving. So as you're being blessed, you can either grab it with two hands and say, look what I've got, or you can say, I'm going to bless God by blessing those that he's called me to bless, the widows, the orphans. Okay. That's how I would see it. All right, good. What else? How can our hearts be applied to what we just read? A wilderness, a desert. Uh, I mean, my heart's pretty, uh, pretty good here, right? I mean, it's kind of green and lush. Is it? How, how are our hearts like the wilderness that needs the, re the renovation? We're still prone to our sins. Our, the passions still are there. We still contend with them. And that is where it's dry. Okay. It needs to become flesh. All right. So our hearts are like this desert, this was wilderness, and it, it, it's the process. Israel, as lush and green as it is, with so many beautiful crops and, and many things, or if, if the water was to be taken away from that, what would it become? Desert. A desert again. Um, and why? Well, we can't say, well, you know, we watered the desert last year. You got to keep your heart flowing with living water. Otherwise, the desolation begins to set in. And it's the process. We don't ever get complacent enough to say, I watered it yesterday. Um, I have this plant at one of my stores. Um, and thank God, it's a bonsai tree. Because it lives in a bunch of pebbles. Um, it, was, it was a gift from uh, one of the other vendors. Um, 
and it, it lives within these pebbles. It's, it's within a, a small container. And it, it can go a couple weeks without water. Uh, so I, every, as, as my new staff goes in and out of there, I, I, tell, I tell them, you need a water lucky. Hey, you need a water lucky. Why is the plant named lucky? Because it's lucky to be alive. <laughs> and so there's lucky. And lucky has been there for almost five years. But you've got to keep the heart watered. It is. Nothing's changed um, in, in, in humanity. We, we cry out to God when we're in need, and then every, the moment that everything is good and everything's fine, um, we get comfortable and we begin to, you know, forget about God. Yeah, uh, yeah God, I'll get to you. Um, but I'm, now this is more important to me, whatever that is. Um, and so constantly, all throughout the scriptures, from the beginning to the end, he says, remember, remember. And it's to remember God. Did you remember God yesterday? Did, did I remember him? Or, or did I forget? I have to constantly remind myself. Because oftentimes, if I don't remind myself, one, that God is true and real, this world can be that which distracts us because it feels so real. It sounds so real. It tastes so real. But this world is passing away. So we see that God is, is saying to us, renew the desert within you. Let the living water flow. The, the maim haim, the living water. And what are some qualities of living water? Mold? Schmutz? Okay, fresh. Um, it's moving. Yeah, minerals, yeah. It's, it, there's a, a movement. Uh, which, which, which qualifies um, living water. Uh, a pond, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a dead end. Uh, a lake, eh, maybe, it depends if it has an out, outlet. But living water, what are, what are the, what's the living water that we must feed on each day? Okay, his word, um, his presence. Um, Messiah says, out of, out of your belly will flow living waters. Um, and, when, and he uses the belly as the heart. He also says that you, you can't have fresh water and salt water. Um, and he says that, and it's a mystery because we, sinful as we are, sometimes we have fresh water. And other times we're pretty salty. So it's this process that we're all in. Over a few chapters to uh, chapter 62 of Isaiah, Ishayahu one of the prophets, inspired of God who carries his word. Chapter 62 and verse 1 it says, For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a lamp that burns. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord uh, will name. And you shall be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal symbol, a diadem, in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed forsaken, nor shall your land any more be called desolate, but you shall be called Chazapah in your land, Belua, for the Lord delights in you. He says, it, this, is, this is a good thing. He says, no more, no, more, no more of those places within you will be desolate. And yes, he speaks of, of the land of Israel, but he speaks of the hearts of his people. He says that you'll be given a new name. Uh, what, is, what is the new name that he will give to each of us? Don't know yet. But it is, that will be how he sees us. What we, have, how, what we have done in this life for him. 
he will say it in, in artistic names. Um, of course, we know Hebrew itself is a picture language. Um, a Hebrew name doesn't just mean this. It means, it's oftentimes, this, because it's a composite picture. Uh, and so the name that he'll, he will give to you is a name that he sees. It's not the name that our parents gave us. Um, it's not the name that we give to our, even to our children, but it will be how our Father sees us. And it will be ne- unique to you. It will be your name. And nobody else will have it. Um, no more 100,000 errands. It will be one name that, that is glorious and describes you. Probably have to write it on a white stone just to remember it, right? And keep it in your pocket. Oh yeah, that's me. Baruch Hashem. Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11. And verse 17. And therefore say, thus says the Lord God, I will gather you from the people and assemble you from the countries where you've been scattered and I will give you the land of Israel. And they will go there and they will take away all of its detestable things and all of its abominations from there. And I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within them and take out the stony heart of their flesh and give them a heart of, sorry, stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And they shall be a peop- for me, my people, and I will be their God. When he says um, he's going to take out our stony heart and put a heart of flesh, um, he's using a metaphor, an analogy. Uh, what does it mean to have a, a stony heart? Okay. One that's dead, one that doesn't beat. What else? Okay. Um, a, a prideful heart. Um, a hard heart. It, there's no life. But he says... He's going to remove that and put a heart of flesh. Um, And he says, a spiritual rejuvenation. Uh, A heart of flesh is a heart that is able to function correctly. And so this new spirit that he puts within us is, of course, himself. God is a God of of renovation. Um, And we may say to to ourselves at times, I I don't know, God, I just, I don't know if, if, if I can make it. I don't know if I can do this. But God is saying, I am with you. There's a contrast there of hardness and softness. Because there's the hardness of it and sensing of a prideful, arrogant individual and one who has a softness to the things of God, who is pliable and wants to conform to his image. Yeah. When you read those words there, um, who pops in your mind? You don't have to say it out loud, please. You think of, oh yeah, I know somebody like that. Oh yeah, it's that person, or oh yeah, uh, yeah, it's my sibling, it's my... When you read those words, who should you see in there? Yourself. You should see you, and I should see me. This isn't about me going, mm-hmm, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, it's that person... Who, work, who I work with. It's that person who lives across the street. It's that, no, this is medicine for you and for me. Because you can't change them. You can only change you. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew the right spirit within me. It, it's, this is medicine for you and for me. Uh, this is the best self-help that you and I could possibly get. Because it, it, it is helping ourselves, but it's through and by the grace of God. I mean, so he says, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is going to be, I'm going to be changing. What's our, our common uh, approach in, in our days? Um, when, when we say, yeah, I've, I've tried, but I haven't made any ground. What, what's pretty common for us? What, what do we do? We get defeated. Okay, we get defeated, mm, discouraged. What else? Okay. Uh, you see, the old term uh, um, about sliding, uh, it's, in, in, it's in an understanding of climbing a mountain. Um, have you ever climbed a mountain or a hill and you stepped on a loose rock uh, and you've experienced that sliding, falling feeling? Uh, it's, it's really painful. Not so much the sliding as much as the everything that, that, you, that you drag yourself along down the way. 
And if you've ever climbed a mountain uh, using ropes or perhaps your own, you know, just your two feet or arm hands climbing, it isn't easy. If it was easy, it wouldn't be climbing. It'd be rappelling, which is relatively easy. Climbing takes effort. It takes focus, determination. You don't climb a mountain halfway like Everest and say, eh, I'm, I'm done. Uh, you either finish the ascent or you go down in defeat. And this is an ascent, this life of the Spirit that we have in Messiah. There is a way down, but it isn't so great. The way forward is to keep moving, to keep climbing every day, every breath. Keep the ascent going. And, and if you find yourself itching back to slide, we cry out to God. We, we reach out to each other because we don't have to do this alone. We're here together in this journey. Ruch Hashem. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. In verse 22. It says that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the, de the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the mind of the spirit, that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. And therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth to his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin, nor let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So he's saying, we've put on a new person, uh, we say uh, the, the inner man is, is, is a spiritual life of our soul. And it's something that takes nurturing. Um, it takes an effort to be able to keep that, that soul growing and living. Um, it says, don't be like you were. When we say how we were, um, what are we saying? Don't, don't, don't be the way that we were. You see, the world is dead. The walking dead. And there's no life without God, without the Rucha within us. He's saying, put that aside and come into the glory of God. The beauty of God, which is transforming. And when we do that, we go through this process, we become more kind and compassionate. We're grateful. Um, how hard is it to be grateful? Not just the words, thank you, but gratitude. How hard is it? Is it, is it easier to be grateful than it is to be selfish? I don't know. What's the key element in gratitude that selfishness lacks? Love. 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 And what else? Humility. And so when we're selfish, we, we seek to please ourselves. But when we have gratitude towards God, then it pours out into our, our families, into uh, our brothers and sisters, both physical and spiritual. It's the life of the Spirit becomes that a living water that flows out of us. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 13. For not even those who are circumcised keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may, they may boast in your flesh. But God forbid that I should boast in anything except the cross of our Lord Messiah Yeshua, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For in Messiah Yeshua, Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. 
It's this restoration. The restoration of Israel doesn't truly take place in a, in a land as much as it is in the hearts of all who call upon him. Jew and Gentile become one in Messiah, not because of the flesh, but because of the spirit. And when the Israel of God, the Messiah's Israel, the church becomes sensitive to the true calling, which is the renovation of the heart, then we become a true witness. And how do we witness what's happening inside to the world? What do they see? Mm -hmm. Mashiach said, this is the, how they're going to know that you're mine. And he's talking about the community, the, the church, the, the, the body of Messiah. Uh, how do they treat each other? The love that they have for one another, the forgiveness, the healing that is experienced within community. That we, we show that we're gods by how we interact with each other. And it's a process. But or the apostle says, I'm not going to glory in anything. I didn't do a whole lot, what he says, on this earth. And yet he changed the world by allowing God to use him through the writings that which have endured. He didn't accomplish a whole lot when, like Messiah, many if not most you know, abandoned him. But the fruit that he, the seeds that he sowed have created great harvests down through the ages and will continue to do so. All because he was obedient. Struggled at first, didn't he? Um, I seem to remember this guy named Saul. Uh, he was a little bit hard-hearted, don't you think? Just a wee bit. But he got knocked off his horse. And he humbled himself before God because God took away everything from him. His status, his sight. He, he brought him low so that he could raise him up. And it's the only reason that God humbles us, sometimes physically, is to raise us up spiritually so that we can accomplish what he has for us. This is the new beginning. Today is the day that we can make a new beginning, all of us, by our, our resolve, not our resolution, our resolve to be different, to be like what God says that we should be like, peaceful and merciful and compassionate, and allowing him to do that work within us. Philippians 3.13, we'll close here. Philippians. Philippians 3.13. Sorry, we'll actually go back up to verse 12. Philippians 3.12. The apostle again writes, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Messiah Yeshua has also laid for me. Brothers and sisters, I do not count myself having to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Messiah Yeshua. And therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. If anything you think otherwise, God will reveal it to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that which we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and be of the same mind. He says, I'm pressing forward. I can't allow the past to chain me down of my mistakes or the things that I have, I have failed in. I, I, I look towards the prize, which is God himself. And that's it. I keep my eyes on the prize. When um, a runner is tired, what do you think keeps he or she going? The finish line. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, people run for, or they, 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 they do all these things for these like, kind of silly things. You know, there's like medals. Uh, you know, maybe it's an, an endorsement so they can buy you know, more cars and stuff. But we run this race for an eternal, unperishable prize. And that is eternal life. And, 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 the, and the beauty of being with God forever. Never, ever despair, no matter what. But let us eagerly draw to, near to Messiah, and let us not despair of our salvation. For it is a trick of the devil to lead us into despair by reminding us of our past sins. 
When someone is defeated after offering stiff resistance, he should not give up in despair, but let him take heart, encouraged by the words of God. God raises up those who have fallen. Do all in your power not to fall, for the strong athlete should not fall. But if you do fall, get up again at once and continue the contest. Even if you fall a thousand times, rise up each time. We have to be those that don't say, I can't do it. But those that say, I can do all things through Messiah Yeshua who lives in me. I can do all things. And we apply this and live and keep moving forward, keep the climbing, the ascent. Top of the holy mountain is God himself who sits metaphorically, perhaps literally, awaiting our, our coming to him. And so we are in this process and in this life together. Let's pray together. Repeat after me. My God, do not abandon me. I have done nothing good before you. But grant me in your compassion the power to make a new beginning. From this day, from this hour, from this minute, let me strive to love you and my neighbor and to do your holy will in all things. Amen.